You're watching Ride Tech TV, and today we're going to be taking out this old, nasty, crusty front subframe out of this first gen F body behind me, and we're going to be swapping in place a brand new, first ever front subframe from Ride Tech. Now it kind of goes without saying, but we're going to make some assumptions here when it comes to the disassembly of this engine and transmission before the subframe is ready to come out. A lot of these cars have modified engines, modified transmissions, wholly different engines and transmissions that have been swapped into them, different fuel injection systems. They may or may not have AC systems anymore that have to be uh, depressurized safely. So we'll show you what we're going to do on this vehicle in particular, but just know that it may be different for your specific application. So here we are, we're a third of the way through the entire subframe changeout process here on Josh's 1967 Camaro. We've got the factory subframe out, the engine and transmission as well, and what we're about to do now is change over all of the drivetrain components onto this new subframe, as well as prep this new subframe and get all the suspension components installed and everything torqued down that we can before we get it up under the car and reinstall it. But before we do that, let me take a few minutes to show you just what all this subframe comes with and what all you can expect to enjoy out of it. All right, so one of the key improvements that we've made on this new subframe relative to a factory F-body subframe is the fact that these frame rails are much thinner on either side compared to a factory one. And the benefit that that's going to, you're gonna derive from that is, I mean, just look at this factory subframe over here. When you have a wider wheel and tire combination, you're going to run into the outside of that frame rail on the inside and, and back side of those tires. So Josh has a 275 millimeter tire. However, he's encountering those rubbing issues and that's limiting his steering. He won't have any of those issues with this subframe because of uh, the work that we've done here. We're able to fit an 18 by 10 inch wheel with a six and a half inch backspace and uh, that can fit and turn lock to lock with no steering modifications or modifications to your inner fender liners. Another one of the huge benefits of upgrading to the subframe is also steering related. Uh, you're no longer required to use the old steering technology. This is a rack and pinion steering rack from a Fox Body Mustang. And so we've integrated that into our design and uh, that installs right here in the front and uh, greatly improves the steering feedback, the driver feedback that you get from the steering wheel. Outside of that, we've got our uh, billet outer tie rod end connections, our billet steering brackets, billet aluminum steering brackets. We also have billet aluminum. These are T6061 billet aluminum with a type three hard coat anodizing process and a high quality uh, upper ball joint here. But these are your upper control arms. Below you've got tubular control arms coupled with our Fox factory coilover and spring. Back here we have the engine mount plates that will accept uh, Josh's conventional small block Chevy engine. And, uh, and then we have an adjustable transmission cross member at the very back, which can be to adapt to any of the late model uh, or classic popular transmissions, whether you have an automatic or a manual that you would prefer to use. And then jumping up here, we've got some of the other uh, steering rack bushings, uh, steering rack bolts, all the hardware fasteners for your coilovers and the suspension arms, um, all your alignment tabs, your steering conversion adapter, brackets, and all of that that comes supplied with the kit. What you'll also get is a full set of instructions which will carry you through the entire process 
of getting this thing out of the box, getting it prepped, and getting it ready to install in your vehicle. And with that said, guys, we're ready to turn it back over to Josh and Dylan and let them get back to work. So one of the decisions you'll have to make when you're ordering your front subframe kit from RideTech is whether or not you want to go with a hub spindle or pin spindle configuration. Now if you have an original pin spindle, that's totally fine if you're wanting to retain your factory brakes or if you have upgraded brakes for a pin spindle configuration, then this would be the option for you. But if you want to run more late model brakes, whether you want to run some of the GM takeoffs from a C5 or a C6 Corvette um, or some of the aftermarket options that are available for those, you're gonna to wanna to go with a hub spindle configuration. Now, this will accept a C5, C6, or C7 hub and allow you to run those C5 or C6 brakes. We've got some new hubs set up here, but Josh's car already has these tall AFX hub spindles with C5 brakes, and so we're just gonna carry them over to the subframe that we're putting together here. Good morning, Ride Tech Nation. It's a new day, and I am standing on what used to be the subframe installed in Josh Petrie's 1967 Camaro. Our new Ride Tech unit is installed underneath the car at this point, and today we're just working on getting all the connections restored, engine connections, transmission connections, uh, making sure that all the lower control arms are greased and all the brake lines are carried over. Uh, one thing in particular that we noticed yesterday afternoon was that we needed to get a little bit longer of a brake line on Josh's ca uh, car from the calipers to the frame. Due to the extra inset of the frame, um, we needed those uh, that create the extra wheel and tire clearance. So we're robbing a couple of the things off here, a couple of ground straps that need to be carried over to the car. But outside of that, uh, we're working on getting brakes bled and looking forward to getting this car on the ground a little bit later and testing things out. All right, so one of the important things you're gonna to have to plan around is the fact that we're upgrading your steering from the old recirculating ball system to a rack and pinion system. So uh, you're gonna to have to convert that over. It's 6AN conversion fitting kit for Ford, part number SFK01. What that allows you to do is these will go in your rack. Uh, there's no way you can mess these up because there's two different fitting adapter sizes, but once you get those installed, you'll also have to make a line. You can run down to your local hydraulics parts store and have them convert this over uh, and create a female end on the end that goes down to your rack. So that'll screw right on top of this new O-ring adapter. And then in this particular application, Josh has got a power steering cooler. We're just going to be able to modify his existing rubber line uh, and use this uh, push on barb style dash six AN that'll run right down to the rack.
right, so we just got back from the hydraulic shop and now we have a much shorter line with the correct female AN end on it. So that will install on the Dash 6 adapter going into the steering rack. And now this line can go on the car. So we've got the high pressure connections made now, and now Dylan is going to modify this hose here. This is the factory low pressure connection to the rack. This is that dash six barb fitting that we were talking about. We're just gonna take this piece out, convert it over to this one here, and then reinstall it in its place on the rack. Now that our power steering connections are made, we're ready to adapt the factory steering column to the new power steering rack from the Fox body. We'll do that using a series of adapters. Uh, this will install on the rag joint itself, followed by this adapter piece here. That'll install on this end of the shaft, and then on the rack end, we'll connect here to the top of the rack itself. Once those are all tightened in place, we'll have successfully converted over to a Fox body steering rack.